Okay, now be honest. Despite your best intentions, did you mess around during 2022 and either not get your book planned or started or finished? Will you do the same in 2023? If you're going to make 2023 your year for writing, then don't wait for the new year. Pencil in some time this month to give yourself the best possible start. If you do, you'll launch into 2023 with a burst of energy. You'll be ahead of the game, going into January with a sharp eye and a precise plan. In this episode, I'll run you through seven things to do before New Year's Day, and I'll be doing them right along with you. Hi, I'm Stuart Wakefield, an author accelerator, certified book coach and writer. With 26 years in theater, broadcast media and coaching under my belt, I know what makes stories work. And I love to share that with other writers because the world of storytelling is like the ocean. It's deep, it's mysterious, and it's a little scary to those who don't know how to navigate it. And with so much left to luck and timing, it's my mission to give great books the best chance of getting into readers' hands. In each episode, I'll share tips and plans of action that will help you write, edit, and publish your book. If you're new to writing or consciously working to improve your craft, then this is the podcast for you. There was some writing I wanted to do in 2022 that didn't happen. I mean, it wasn't like I wasn't doing stuff, but I didn't finish the two novels I wanted to. Instead, I planned three other novels, as well as loads of other book coaching and other writing. But those two novels escaped me. And what's even more frustrating is that I was so close to finishing them both when 2022 began. I don't want to do the same in 2023. With that in mind, I'm putting seven steps into action that I'm positive will make me feel like the writer I want to feel like, and I want to share those with you. So let's get started. Number one, review your year. 2022 has plenty of wisdom to share. Before it slips away, take a moment to reflect on your experiences and cherish the moments that will stick with you for the years to come. And don't be afraid to look at what slipped, why it slipped, and what you can do to stop that happening again. For me, I'd hoped to finish my novel Spirit of Water, and the second novel in my Bacchus Chronicles series. Just so you know, I've been trying to finish Spirit of Water for 10 years. 10 years! Yes, I did loads of other stuff in 2022. I relaunched my coaching business. I started freelance writing. I wrote a novelette, I compiled, designed and published my writing group's first anthology, and I wrote three episodes of a new comedy TV show, and I've never even written for TV before. And that's all brilliant! But not finishing those novels bugged me. And why did that happen? Well, because on my daily list of things to do, my writing came last. There was always something else to do that I thought was more important than my writing. Yes, giving my coaching clients my best self is non-negotiable. And there was no way I was going to turn down the chance to work for TV. And yes, it was important to bring my fellow anthology writers through the thrill of publishing a book. But those two novels, ugh. Number two, get clear on what's most important. Cramming your day with 101 tiny tasks won't suddenly make you the writer you want to be, but if you get clear on your core goals, it's like a floodlight shining on the path you need to take. So, define what matters most to you, and then make a plan to get where you're going. For me, from now on, on my daily list of things to do, my writing will come first, closely, very closely, followed by my coaching work. Number three, set a context for 2023. Okay, so we've pinpointed the things that are most important to us. Define a word for the year that will grant you permission to say yay to the stuff that resonates with you and boo to the stuff that doesn't jive. My 2023 word is accomplished. Now, I know that's not incredibly creative, but I want to accomplish these goals. 
Number one, I want to secure a spot in a creative writing PhD course. God help me. Number two, I want to publish Words of Water. Number three, author, I want to get Author Accelerator certification as a non-fiction book coach. I'm certified in fiction, but I want to do non-fiction as well because I know there's a group of writers I can serve. Now, that's going to be a stretch goal because it depends on my practicum clients' availability and their energy and their willingness to hit the deadlines. Number four, I'm going to publish the next novel in my Bacchus Chronicles series. Now, that's roughly one thing per quarter, and I've been sure to give myself plenty of flex. I'm hoping it won't take 13 weeks to get onto a PhD course, but I guess we'll soon find out. Number four, review your habits. James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, says you get what you repeat. So are your habits helpful or hurtful? Could you benefit from incorporating some new tricks into your lifestyle to guarantee your success? Be honest about the behaviours you're doing on autopilot and have a think about whether it's time to roll out some modifications. Now, I've had a rough year. My mum passed away in late 2021 and she was a hoarder. It took me until April 2022 to clear our house and get it into a condition to even start the selling process. One of our cats died. One of our dogs put up a brave battle with cancer but passed away on December 10th. There's never a good time for a pet to pass away, but both my husband and I were suffering with the most awful chest infections. Since then, I haven't bothered setting my alarm, and now my days are all over the place. But as of today, I set my alarm and I'm getting some structure back into my days. I deserve to end my working days feeling good. Which brings us to... Number five, make a to-feel list. Goals and context and changing things up are great for injecting some purpose into your life. But what sort of person do you want to be and how do you want to feel? I learned about to-feel lists from my best friend, Jazz Amparfar, Speaker of the Year. She says that we'll all die with an unfinished to-do list. So why not concentrate on doing the things that contribute to how we want to feel? In the words of Oscar Wilde, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people just exist. Build a to-feel list and you'll find it simpler to experience the rarest thing in the world. On my daily list of things to feel, feel like a writer will come first. I'll want to write if I want to feel like a writer. Number six, create your support structure. American entrepreneur Jim Rohn famously said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So who will surround you in 2023 and help you thrive? For example, is it time to join a writing group? I didn't have any local writing groups. So when I started two out of my National Novel Writing Month cohorts, first in Essex and now in Hertfordshire. Each month, we make commitments as to where we'll be by the next meeting. And during every meeting, at least one of us says, and I wouldn't have done it without you lot. Would you go further with an accountability buddy or a mentor? Having someone out there who's expecting pages from you is a huge motivator. Do you want to find more online groups where your people hang out? My writing group is online and it's just as social as it is productive. Plus, I don't have to haul my cookies out of the house for meetings when it's sitting down with rain. Does your friendship group nourish and support you? Does your family nourish and support you? If they don't, consider a writing group, accountability buddy or mentor. They will understand the writing life. Number seven, set a three month goal. Goals for the year are great, but chances are you're thinking you have until December to get them done. If you can split one goal down into four constituent parts or have four smaller goals, I have four, remember? They can guide your every move. Accomplishing things that matter most to you gives you a sense of achievement and make you the master builder of your own destiny. So don't just set goals, craft them. This way, you can ensure that your dreams and aspirations are well within reach. I already have a self journal from bestself.co that's dedicated to 13 weeks of work so I can track my goals within those 13 weeks. I've also ordered a copy of a book called The 12-Week Year for Writers, a comprehensive guide to getting your writing done, 
by A. Trevor Thrall because I want to feel accomplished by hitting the deadlines for my goals. This year, I've proved to producers and myself that I can not only write, but I can rewrite an entire TV episode in 24 hours. So imagine what I can do with that novel I've been putting off for 10 years. 10 years. Blimey. Before I wrap up, I invite you to do all the usual stuff like like, review, share and subscribe. But better than all of that, come and visit me at thebookcoach.co. Sign up for my free self-editing guide and take a look at the services I provide. But there's tons of free useful stuff on my blog too. So... Here's a reminder of the seven things you can do to prepare for your next year of writing. And if you're listening after December 2022, don't let that stop you from following these steps and plan for the year ahead. Number one, review your year. Take a moment to cherish the moments that will stick with you. Look at what slipped, look at why it slipped and figure out what you can do to stop that happening again. Number two, get clear on what's most important. Define what matters most to you for the year ahead. Number three, set a context. Define a word for the year that will grant you permission to say yes to the stuff that resonates with you and no to the stuff that doesn't. Number four, review your habits. Be honest about the behaviours you do on autopilot and decide if it's time to roll out some modifications. Number five, make a to-feel list. You're going to die with an unfinished to-do list, so why not concentrate on doing the things that contribute to how you want to feel? Here's a hint. I want to feel like a writer should probably feature on your list. Number six, create your support structure. Is it time to join a writing group? Is it time to start a writing group? Is it time to find an accountability buddy or mentor? Whatever route you take, find someone who understands the writing life. Number seven, set three month goals. Don't simply set goals, but be kind to yourself and craft them into manageable chunks. This way you can ensure that your dreams and aspirations are well within reach. If you think mentoring might be a good option for you, check out my monthly mentoring service. What fresh adventures await you in 2023? Here's to making the coming year one for the books, your books. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day and well done for investing some time in your own writing life. And yes, this podcast is about writing, but I'm here for you, not just your story. 